Hello and welcome. This is V from the Top. I'm Odeve Sharafai Sufa and I thank you for tuning in today. International oil companies or IOCs have gradually been letting go of their positions onshore and in shallow waters and with increasing support from the government, local exploration and production companies are expanding their shelf output and prospects. The awarding of marginal fields to indigenous oil companies has been broadly positive for local players in terms of building their capacity, credibility and expertise. Nevertheless, practitioners think we're still some years away from seeing an indigenous operator of a deep water offshore field. So what will it take for Nigerian companies to take on the IOCs and play in the really big league? Meanwhile, the oil and gas industry is not for the faint-hearted. It is still overwhelmingly male with surveys showing that the executive boardrooms of petroleum companies are mostly a men's club. Say only about 1% of executive board seats are held by women. View from the top will be discussing this and more with Mrs. Uju Ifejika, chairman and CEO of Britannia U Group, an indigenous oil and gas company. Thank you, Mrs. Ifejika, for joining us. Thank you very much, Mother. Mrs. Ifejika is chairman and chief executive of the Britannia U Group, an indigenous group of oil and gas companies. Its core business is petroleum, with operations covering the entire spectrum, from exploration to production, refining, trading, engineering, supply, and distribution. Now let's get you acquainted with Mrs. Ifejika before we settle down to our conversation. Uju Catherine Ifejika was born on October 28, 1959. She attended University Primary School in Suka, Queen's School Enugu, and Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, where she obtained a diploma and a bachelor's degree in law. She was called to the bar in 1986. For 20 years, she worked at Texaco, which later merged with Chevron, rising from the position of junior counsel to the post of regional company secretary and manager public and government affairs, covering businesses in Cameroon, Togo, Benin Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, and the DRC. She took an early retirement in 2007 to nurture Britannia U. Mrs. Ifejika is a member of the Nigeria Bar Association, a fellow of the Institute of Arbitration and Conciliation, and a member of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators. Let me start by asking you, your company's operations covers the entire spectrum, from exploration to production, refining, trading, supply and distribution, which stands it out among its contemporaries in the continent. But have you ever worried that you're biting off more than you can chew? You see, I don't think so. For the simple reason that we want to have a one-stop shop company. What do I mean by that? Every single one of the companies that I formed after Britain U, Exploration and Production, was born out of the experience that I had when we were um, starting off. For example, the subsurface engineering company came up, data appraisal, came up because I drilled a dry hole and we lost $23 million. So for me, how did we drill a dry hole? The, our technical partners then, you know, um, energy equity resources, they, they um, did the data at finding the coordinates where we're going to drill. And then trusting them that they're international organizations so they have better um, equipment and knowledge to be able to have better coordinates than the local companies. And we went and drilled and we found out that we crossed a major fault. And that fault from the rock sedimentation, if you're a good geologist, you should know that, you know, the sequence of the for rock form formation, that this particular place where we put our coordinate uh, shouldn't have uh, been one of the selected points. So after that, we got other consultants to now give us new coordinates and we drilled and found oil. What I did was that I said to myself, if I had a company that is well equipped with all the softwares you can think of, what will happen is that instead of a consultant taking two weeks or three weeks to QC my data and then to come up with coordinates, my team, because this will be a, you know, a subsidiary or an affiliate of the company, this is their job. So they will go ahead and go, you know, deal with the um, interpretation day in, day out. 
something you did in two weeks and something somebody do, they did is going to do in six months, it, there's no way you can have the same result. So that's why we set up that. So every single one of the, the shipping company, I formed the shipping company because when we drilled, we lost $6.8 million. Stand by um, on the week time because the then um, sub, um, uh, boat company that we used, Tidewaters, their boats were not okay. So, and there was nothing you could do. The rigs are tied with the vessels. So what I did was I said, look, I can maintain my boat better. And since I'm going to be in this business long term, why do I have to hire when I don't know the state of those equipment? I might as well set up one that meets international standards. I can use it for myself and still uh, lease it out. And that's what, why we had this uh, um, shipping company. And then for the... Um, import the downstream. You know, we started off as uh, um, exploration and production company. You know that you cannot start exploration and production company and just heat the oil like that. You need cash flow to be able to pay your salary, to be able to meet your immediate needs. So I figured that the best way, instead of going to borrow, and then I might as well borrow one time and then go and import product to sell, that gives me a cash flow on one side to meet my immediate needs, pending when we will start. Uh, so today, it's, it's something that is a win-win for us. Would you consider uh, investing in, in a refinery? Yes and no. You tell me why not. Don't just go in and say, I want to have a refinery. You must have a feed mill for that refinery, which is crude. What is going to happen? You want me to invest and start begging somebody in NMPC or somebody in government to, 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 to give you crude? No. For me to invest, because this investment is capital intensive and you need return on capital employed. So for anybody to go into that, there must be a clear cut, uninterrupted um, source of crude allocation. So if government is ready to put that down, people will come in. And they have to have a clear policy that is for long term. National Assembly will have to um, okay it. That even if today President Buhari is going to leave, the next president will not come in and say, look, because I don't like his face, I'm going to cancel it. Because this has nothing to do with investment opportunities. This is economy that runs, that's the wheel upon which the country runs on. By now, if the government had done what they ought to have done in the past, we will not be where we are today. We have no business importing products. We have to take a break now. We ask that you please join us again after this short break.